going to take a break from First Thessalonians, and uh, we're going to focus on this gift of lament. And I know that kind of sounds like an oxymoron, uh, having the word gift and lament in the same sentence. Uh, but we're going to discover what a treasure lament is this morning uh, as we turn to God's word and look at the Psalms. Um, we're going to be looking at Psalm 3 this morning. And for us, hopefully, did you, everybody get a handout this morning? Good, because this will really help you uh, later and today as well. But this is a Psalm of David, Psalm 3, that we're going to be looking at this morning. He's fleeing from his son Absalom, Absalom, who is uh, wanting to kill him, actually. And so let's see what God's word has for us this morning. If you please stand real quick, get your blood flowing again. As we look at God's word, uh, it's not a really long psalm, but uh, looking at Psalm 3 here. Oh, Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God, Selah. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I, cry, I cried aloud to the Lord, and, and he answered me from his holy hill, Selah. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings be on your people, Selah. So those are the verses we're looking at this morning and many others as we dig into the Psalms. Let's pray. Father, I thank you again for uh, being here in the chapel. And uh, Lord, just speak to our hearts today through this um, Gift of lament, help us to heal today with your words. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. You may have a seat. <clears throat> so again, today's message is called the, the Gift of Lament. And uh, so today marks like seven months since Melinda and I have been here. And we've uh, been able to uh, get to know you a little bit better and uh, to, to know to know your 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 highs and your lows at the same time. And, and that's why I thought today would be a great uh, opportunity to, to take a look back at what God's word um, talks about with this gift or art of lamenting. Because his word offers us many examples of that uh, throughout the Bible, and uh, mainly in the Psalms. Now this is something that might be something you're currently going through or something that you know, you've been wrestling with for a long time and uh, for a long period of time. I, I know Melinda and I have, have taken a lot of uh, classes in biblical counseling and in this last track of what, 30 hours or whatever it was, the art of lamenting really spoke to me because uh, I mean, we all go through pain, right? We all, I mean, that's life. We all go through struggles. And, and so this one really spoke to me. And, and the Psalms give us many examples over and over again. So there's like 150 Psalms, right? 50 of them, one third of them are Psalms of lament. So it must be pretty important for God's people. Another thing about lament is it's not something that you're putting your hand up for, sign me up to lament. You know, it's something that you go through, okay? Um, because life has thrown some hard times on you. And so, uh, and that's gonna look differently in everybody's life, right? My, my pain's different than your pain. Um, but the thing that stays the same, even though our pain is different, is the gift of lament. It stays the same. It, it's quite amazing. Because it helps you verbalize your pain, your frustrations, or your questions uh, to God. But the, the important part of this journey is you don't stay there um, in this pattern of complaining or asking, God's que asking God questions. Because there's a turnaround that happens that takes you from your questioning of why God to who God. Who else am I going to turn to? Because I believe in you. I know that you're good in all of my heart. And you're the one that's going to take me out of this valley. So it's quite an amazing uh, journey as you go through lament. It's not going to be easy because our pain is real, right? Our pain is real. But I believe God's ready to show us 
uh, something in a new way today on how to uh, take that pain and bring that to him through this gift of lament. So again, we uh, have been doing these biblical counseling classes, and there's a guy right up the road here in Indianapolis, a pastor named uh, Mark Vrogop, who, uh, who actually spoke on this gift of lament, and he found it just the same way anybody else does, going through some rough times. He didn't realize what he was doing, how he was taking his questions to God. Like, God, I know that you're a good God, but today it doesn't feel that way. That kind of stuff. That's what he was going through. And so he, he, made, it, he made this journey through lament, and he kind of took a step back, and, and he wrote a book about it all, how God took him through his pain to God, God's throne. And this book is going to be something that we're going to look at today uh, because everybody goes through this. Every human cries, but Christians lament. Okay, that's what we're meant to do, lament. So before we go too far, let's, let's look at what is lament. I mean, maybe you've never heard that word before. Lament is a prayer in pain that leads to trust, okay? Lament typically asks two questions, not always, but typically, where are you, God? And if you love me, why is this happening? Again, today's a heavy topic. It's a heavy topic. But there's release at the end of it, I do believe, if we will take this and apply it. You know, sometimes these questions are asked on an individual basis, like, why, God, why is this happening? Sometimes it's asked as a community. A community could go through something, like a tornado, a flood. We've seen that down in Kentucky, and even here in parts of Indiana and Illinois. Uh, it could be even something way too common that we're going through anymore, school shootings or any kind of shooting. It could be a community lamenting, okay? So it's an individual or a community suffering Again, where are you, God? If you love us, why is this happening? So you might think of lament as being the opposite of praise, but it isn't. It's taking you to praise. It's just something that we go through from our brokenness and our disappointment. But this brokenness takes us to God's mercy. That's where this lament lies, in between pain and the promise of who God is. It's in, the, it's in the middle, from our heartache to the hope that we have in him. This is where lament is. It's in the middle of all that. So let's look at a few elements that are involved uh, in the pattern of lament. Now, not every lament has all four of these, but typically you're going to find these four things in a lament. A turn or address to God. A complaint or a request asking boldly God. And then it takes you to an expression of trust or praise because that's who you're taking your pain to. You know he's faithful, right? He's going to pull you out of the valley. So we're going to break these down a little bit today. I'm going to give you some examples before we dive into the psalm that you have on your sheet. Again, step one is turning to God. We're looking at Psalm 77 here. That's the first step, always turning to God. That seems like a no-brainer, right? Turning to God. Why would we turn to the world when God is the only one who can really help us? It's like the sign says out there, take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, that's on our sign out there. It's the perfect place to start, and that's where we start with our lament. It's an invitation to turn to the difference maker, and that's God. Let's look at 77 verses 1 and 2. Says, the psalmist says, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. So in the opening line of this text, it kind of sets the whole tone for the entire psalm. The psalmist is crying aloud to God. He repeats it twice, aloud. To, he's in pain, right? I'm crying, but yet he knows who to turn to in his pain. Look at the next words. These are words of faith. He will hear me. I cry aloud to God. He will hear me. Now, this particular psalm is written by a guy named Asaph. He's uh, one of the chief musicians for King David. Um, so he's a guy that leads praises for the people, but yet he struggles with life, you know? No, everybody struggles with life. Nobody's superhuman, right? And so that's who's writing this. 
Even though he struggles with life, he knows who to take his struggles to, the one who will hear him. I cry aloud. Asaph knows who to turn to in his pain. He knows in the day of my trouble, I hope you can see this. Can you see that red coming out very good or not? In the days of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. In the middle of his distress, he's seeking the Lord. During the day, during the night, and his hands almost reaching out as a prayer. His hands are reaching out. He's looking for answers, but his soul refuses to be comforted because his pain is so real and so deep. He's not ready to go to the next step yet. But the next step is this, complain. I know that doesn't sound like anything that uh, we, we don't uh, think of that as something that we do, right? But who are we kidding? We all complain. But our culture is kind of frowns on complaining, don't we? When these Psalms were written back in 1400 BC, that culture had a total different outlook on complaining. I mean, the Old Testament is full of complainers. Maybe you've noticed that. The New Testament has its share of complainers as well. But let's face it, since the church has started, we've had complainers all along. I thought I'd hear an amen this morning. Yeah, yeah. maybe you had somebody complaining on your way here, right? <laughs> I can't believe we're doing the chapel this morning. You know how cold it is in there? It's just our human nature, right? To complain. Yeah, that word complain isn't a very positive word in our culture, but it was a release in that culture. And you see it time and time again in the Psalms. And apparently they're not sinful either to bring your frustrations to the Lord. As long as it doesn't turn to anger, it's not a sin. It's not a sin. I mean, they've actually been set to music, these uh, songs of lament. So since we're on step two, I wanna say that complaining isn't the same as being angry with God. It's just a way to voice your frustrations with life and who to turn to. Let's look at what the pastor Rogoff talks about in his book. He says, lament is how those who know what God is like and believe in him address their pain. God is good, but life is hard. Here's something else that he mentioned, same page. Lament is a language of a people who believe in God's sovereignty, but live in a world of tragedy. Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Let's look at Psalm 10 for an example of this. Psalm 10 is where we're at. Starts with two strong complaints, right? Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far away? And then the second one follows it. Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? So the thing about this psalm is the author is anonymous. So we don't know where his pain is coming from, but we know that he is in pain. And he asks, he starts off with this question, why? And, and we see that in, in the book of Psalms over and over again, this question, why? You'll see it in the book of Jeremiah. It's a book full of why, why, why? Job, why, why, why? Those are the three books, big books that really over and over you see this pattern. But what's really neat is they always turn to who in their complaints. They get to this point in their journey. Why, O oh Lord? But then they realize who is the only one who can turn it around. I can't do this myself. I can't do this in my strength. But I know you. I know you can do this. And so they take it back to the Lord. Again, step two is in lamenting is to bring your complaint or your question to the Lord. And that's what the psalmist is doing here, right off the bat. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far away? He's in real pain, isn't he? His words, they are deeply troubled words. God seems to be 100 miles away from his situation. And I think every believer has felt that at one time or another. Whether you're a believer or not, you've probably felt that, that somebody is 100 miles away. Look at the second question in Psalm 10. It seems as if the psalmist has taken his complaint to an accusation. Why do you hide yourself? Now he's accusing God of hiding, right? Why are you hiding in times of trouble? You ever been there? You ever felt like that? Yeah. Our feelings can take us to many places when we're going through stuff, can't they? 
They can distort your perspective and, and try to get you to thinking things about God that aren't true, right? That's what he's going through. I know this makes us feel uncomfortable as we read it because it, it seems like this psalmist is actually calling God out, right? God, you don't seem too godlike today. Why are you hiding from me? It's a struggle. He's deeply struggling with his pain. Not just his pain, but with God himself. So step two is taking those tough questions to the Lord. Because our complaints, our frustrations give a voice to our pain and the struggles that we're going through. And Psalm 10 isn't the only one that does this. We see this over and over again throughout the Psalms. Psalm 44, a psalm of um, the descendants of Korah. You can read about Numbers 16, Korah. But it says, why, awake, why are you sleeping, O Lord? Rouse yourself, do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? There were some famous words that our Lord and Savior lamented about. And they actually, he was repeating a, a Psalm of David in 22.1. Uh, when David was really depressed, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus said those same words on the cross, didn't he? In Matthew 27, he cried out in this prayer of lament. I hope that comforts you this morning that Jesus lamented. We can too. We're free to lament. Tell yourself that. You're free to lament, to take your pain to the Lord. The same words. Now the thing about lamenting is you want to do it with a humble heart because if you stay in this season of just complaining because your pride thinks God owes you something, you're never going to move to the next level. So you have to be humble before the Lord. You have to be honest with your questions that he already knows you're asking and struggling. He just wants you to voice it. He wants, he wants you to release it. Get this off your heart. Bring me your complaints. Bring me your questions. Bring me your frustrations and struggles. Don't carry what you were never intended to carry. That's why lament is such a healer, friends. I hope you see that this morning. Let's go back to what Pastor Rogop says about lament. Lament does not give you an excuse to wallow in your questions or frustrations. It's a means to another end. I love this next line. In the same way a surgeon's cut is meant to heal, so complaint is designed to move us along in our lament. Moving us along in the process. If you never move beyond complaint, lament loses its purpose and its power. You're just stuck in a world of complaining and frustration because you're not giving it to the one who can turn it all around. Make sense? Release release. So we want to allow our complaints and our questions to become a turning point to the one who can change it all. So we ask boldly. That's our third step. Again, not every lament will consist of all four steps. Some of them will leave this one out. But typically there's four steps. So bring your requests, bring your petitions to the Lord. We're going to go back to Psalm 22 here again. Again, David says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? There's a question, why? Are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Notice what happens next in this lament, the turning point, and it all starts with the word yet. Yet. You are holy. See where he's going in his journey? He could have stayed in a world of frustration, but he knows what's true about God. You're not going to leave me in the valley. You are holy. You're enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and they were rescued. In you they trusted, and they were not put to shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. David anchored his soul to these words, right? His question of why turned to who? The one that could turn it around. He knows God is good. He knows God 
is faithful. Even though, even though things stink right now, I still know the truth about you. Right? That's what he's going through. Yet I know better. I know who you are. I want to highlight these words. I hope you can see this. Because this is what his ancestors knew about God. Yet you are holy. And you are fathers trusted. They trusted. You delivered them. Right? To you they cried. And they were rescued. And you they trusted. He remembers what he knows about God. God is holy. God can be trusted. God is a deliverer. And he will rescue you. That's what he knew. It's handed down generation to generation. We have a responsibility too, right? Our kids need to know this. You can trust him. Even when things stink right now, he's going to pull you out. He's going to pull you out because he's holy. He's a deliverer. He will rescue you. So moving on to our last step of lamenting, this is the point where we trust God. I know this is a heavy subject. That's some reason I just felt like this is supposed to be today. I don't know why. Going back to Pastor Rogip's book, he says pain can be a platform for worship. Suffering can lead to trust. Lament is the language for this transition. Songs of sorrow are meant to move us from complaint to confidence in God. From complaint to confidence. Again, we know who he is. We know his character. And, and we see it in words like but, yet, and however. When you see those words, something's changing, right? But God, even while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. He sent his son, right? He sent his son. We see it all over in the Bible. And it just really jumps out in these psalms of lament. Let's look at Psalm 13. This is the whole psalm here. How long, here you'll see the questioning. How long, O oh Lord? And then the complaining. Will you forgive me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? You hear the complaining there? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? How long is this going to go on? And then he asked, consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lift my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy says I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. Here's the turnaround. But I have trusted. He's moved to, to trust, right? In your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. And it led him to worship. His trust has led him to worship. I will sing to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord. He's the one that turned it all around. I will sing to him because he has dealt bountifully with me. Oh, he knows he can trust, and it's led him into worship. So that's our last step, trusting in the Lord. It falls, about, falls back on what you already know about God to be true, who he is. Even though you might be suffering right now, you still know that God is righteous, and he's just and he will deliver us and rescue us. Even though your pain will try to tell you something different. Even though your fears will try to drown out what you know to be true. Remember that fear is a liar, right? Fear will lie to you all day and try to discourage you and distract you with the troubles of this world. When we know who can deliver us. Fear is a liar. I know our pain is real though. And sometimes it calls us to actually question God's goodness. That's why this journey of lament is so helpful for us. And it is a journey. <laughs> it is a journey. Again, everyone cries, but Christians lament. So to close out today's message, I want to look at Psalm 3 that you have on your handout. Because we're going to go through all these steps in one psalm. Okay? Again, this is a psalm of David. He's fleeing from his son who's trying to kill him. His son, Absalom. And the first step is turning to God. Oh, Lord, how many are my foes? Again, David is worried. He's turning to God with his fear, which leads him to the next step, complaining. And we see that in 1B. Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him and God. 
He's feeling overwhelmed here, right? You can see that with his situation. He's overwhelmed. I'm sure we could all relate to this. So and so is rising against me. This group of people are talking about me, right? That's what he's going through. Before we go any further, I want to talk about this word Selah. I don't want you to get hung up on that. That's a, like a musical term. Some translations actually use the word interlude. It's like a space in between uh, music. So don't get hung up on that. But I, I thought I'd better mention it. It's right there, right? It's like, what, Selah, what's that mean? Okay. Step three, we ask boldly. We ask boldly. David's asking boldly. Arise, O Lord. Notice how it went down to verses seven and eight. It totally skipped verses three through six. So there's no correct order for these elements to, there's no like chronological order to the, the, the steps. They could be anywhere in the Psalm, okay? But we see step three is jump down to verses seven and eight. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Sailor. He's asking boldly, isn't he? I mean, this is where we say, help me, God. Help me to change my perspective. Help me to change because my pain's trying to talk me into to, to believing something different about you. Don't allow my fears or my enemies to drag me down into that. Help me to trust in my heart with everything I have in you. Help me to walk in faith in you because I know you are good. And that leads us to our last step where he chose to trust. And we're looking at verses three through six here. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my, my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me. He answered me from his holy hill, Selah. I lay down and slept. I woke again for the Lord sustained me. He's trusting. And he says, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Again, he's on the run. He's on the run from his own son trying to kill him. Can you imagine that? And he sings this song of lament. Again, I know this is a heavy topic, but uh, I also know that God encourages us to release that pain um, and not carry around something that we were never meant to carry when he's willing to take it off you because when we're weighted down with all that it's hard to worship it's hard to see him for who he is because he is good and i know this isn't easy it's not a flip of the switch it's a journey right because we all have different pains it's going to take time but take it to the one who's capable of taking it from you and who's ready to take it from you if you'll unload it on him here's a way to do that Turn to him, step one, complain, ask your frustrations. I don't want to carry this anymore. Ask him boldly, that's the third step. And then trust him, trust him that he'll do it, that he's faithful in his time. Trust him, give it to him, let the healing begin. I've included another Psalm on the back of your handout for you to take home and see if you can figure it out. <laughs> Maybe you're not ready to do that right yet, but look at the four steps of the elements that are involved in uh, this gift of lament and try that on that psalm on the back when you feel like the Lord is leading you to do that. But I hope this has been helpful today. It's been heavy on my heart to talk about this, and I pray that this will help you to release what we're not meant to carry. I know our pain is real but I know our God is good. He is so good, and he's ready for you to turn it over to him. Are we ready to do that? Today is Communion Sunday. Today would be a great day to do that, to take your load and give it to the Lord before we take communion. Say, I'm tired of carrying this, God. I'm so tired of being worn out of stuff that I can't control. Will you take this from him, me? and then trust him in that process. Let's pray. Father, I thank you again for uh, the gift of lament. And Lord, um, I just pray that you're doing something new in our lives today, that uh, you're gonna take this and heal us um, 
You see our heavy loads. You already see our questions. Help us to verbalize that. Help us to write out our own laments to you, Father, and journal them out. Not only will they come off our hearts, they'll go on paper, and then we can see the promises being delivered later. And we'll give you praise for trusting you in the process. Father, I thank you that our fathers before understood this, and they realized this, and, and they were willing to do this. They lamented, and they took their pains to a God that we can't see, but we trust. We know that you have nothing but the best for us. And so, Father, help us in our journey as we turn it over to you. In Jesus' name, amen.